just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. What is our one mouse says for all the way from Kid Robot 90 here, Assistant Manager of DGR Plays. And welcome to a special edition of Tales of the Tape. This time I review the latest wrestling game from the developers of the legendary WCW vs. NW Revenge. Can this game live up to the hype, or is this game just a victim of a game company cashing in on childhood nostalgia? Let's ring the bell and let's find out. Out of all the developers of wrestling games, Yubes is one of the most recognizable names. Besides the WWE 2K series, they've been responsible for the development of one of the most revolutionary, groundbreaking wrestling games in the N64 era. The developer's portfolio includes the legendary WCW vs. NW War series. For more information on the series, please check out a review of WCW vs. NW War Revenge. Links to this review is in the video description and the written version of this review. And this title is centered around the rising star of professional wrestling, All Elite Wrestling or AEW. You can either create a wrestler or pick one from a roster of current AEW superstars, which is seen as icons in professional wrestling, for example Sting and Christian Cage and the legendary Kenny Omega that take to the ring in an in-depth career mode as you fight your way to title glory. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off as if a seven, let's get the negatives out of the way. Each superstar has only one outfit available. This can cause issue for colorblind player as there's no way to change your superstar's outfit to suit your impairments. However, you can switch on player indicators which appear under the superstars to indicate who's controlling what superstar. However, the color contrast that is displayed is red and blue. As we have said time and time again, red and blue are not the hardest hit when it comes to a colorblind player. It still needs addressing nonetheless. So apart from the shortfalls, this game is somewhat playable for a player with visual impairments. But more work needs to be done to add additional character outfits. Ability, I gave it 8. Although there are no subtitle functions present in this game, there is very little need for one. During a match, there is no commentary and dialogue that said during the Road to Elite mode is all text based, so you should be able to understand what's being said when playing this game. Also, similar to the classic N64 games, referee callouts 1, 2, 3 are displayed in the center of the screen. So, playing with hearing impairment, you will play this game with no issues. Next up, Mobility Game of 10. As part of the course for a wrestling game, the control layouts are fully customizable. This is an excellent way to make a game accessible when considering mobility impaired players, especially for console games. That way a mobility impaired player can customize the controls to suit his or her impairments. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay give it 10.5. In short, this game feels like a rebirth of the classic N64 era wrestling games. In a match, the controls feel familiar of the aforementioned WCW vs. NW War Revenge. It still retains the genre of these games surprisingly well, apart from, of course, the fact that Sting is in the roster. The Road to Elite mode gives this game a unique identity. However, this mode is a lot better when you're creating a character. However, when using an existing superstar that's already on the roster like Kenny Omega, the mode feels a lot more simplified, as a superstar cannot upgrade stats nor change its appearance. This removes one of the mode's most interesting features in my opinion. In terms of exhibition modes, there, the game does feel a little underwhelming. The original N64 Classic Games has a lot more match types which are selectable. For example, special guest referees in cage matches to name a few. 
Although the exploding barbed wire deathmatch is a lot of fun to play, as nothing is more pleasurable than watching your least favorite superstar being Irish whipped into a table lined with barbed wire. Obviously, these matches make Mortal Kombat feel like a timid child in the back of a boy's choir in terms of gore. Apart from, of course, the fatality moves. In summary, AEW Fight Forever is a classic textbook example of taking your time while developing a video game turning out to be a massive success. In a way, this game falls in the same category as the recently released Sesame Shock remake. Yes, the development of the game took two years, but the sheer quality of the gameplay makes the wait worth it. If you're a fan of wrestling games, I cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is 88.75%. See you guys in the next review. My own sales power on the way from Kid Robot in Miami, assistant manager of DGR plays out.